Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I am the owner operator of Burner Babies. So there are several common questions that I get um, as a breeder once people take their puppies home. And being a breeder since 2006, I try to cover those topics in my take home packets. Uh, one of the items that you get in your take home packet is about burner growth information. But I thought that I would try to discuss that topic here in this video. So the common question is, what size should my Bernice Mountain Dog puppy be at blank age? Well, the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> and you're probably thinking, what? Aren't you the expert? Well, first of all, I don't consider myself an expert. But the reason that the answer is, I don't know, is because there is not like a specific guide for the Bernie's Mountain Dog because their weight range, their size range is so vast and there, <laughs> there really isn't just like, yep, your puppy should be, you know, X pounds at X weight and that's normal. Their growth is so, um, not necessarily sporadic. <laughs> it's not necessarily sporadic, but it's so vast. So buckle up. This might take a minute as we talk about the random sizes of Bernie's Mountain Dogs. So let's start at the beginning. When you pick up your Bernie's Mountain Dog, their range of weight could literally be from like six or eight pounds, clear up to 25 pounds. So why? Why is their pickup at eight weeks such a huge range? Well, when a puppy is born, you know, minutes old, seconds old, they fit in the palm of my hand. So as you can see, my hand is not very big, it's pretty small, but nose to butt, um, this is the average size of your puppy. Now, if your puppy comes from a small litter, like one or two, they're gonna be much larger. And by larger, I mean chunky. They're gonna be overflowing my hand. But if your puppy comes from a large litter, like 10 or 12 or even more, which we've had, <clears throat> they might not actually fill my hand. They're going to be um, skinnier and they might not actually fill my whole hand. And that's because in the mom's belly, you know, they're, they're really squished in there. And so they're tiny when they're born. So they have a lot of making up to do. And there's a lot of competition for food. So we, as the people, have to kind of make sure everybody's getting to nurse, we're moving puppies and making sure that the little ones are eating and not only the chubby puppies are getting all the food because the chubby puppies do actually push the smaller puppies away um, from mom and they don't necessarily get as much food. So we're constantly making sure that those little puppies are nursing. And so if your puppy gets um, is coming from a larger litter, odds are they're going to be much, much smaller in terms of weight when they go home at eight weeks old. And so the larger puppies tend to come from a smaller litter, like five or less. And then once you get beyond five, they tend to be on the smaller side, maybe 10 ish pounds. So you have to keep that in mind. The larger puppies tend to come from a smaller litter and the let me, let me make sure I remember what I said. The bigger puppies come, tend to come from a smaller litter and the smaller puppies tend to come from a bigger litter. Now, once we start getting bigger litters, we start introducing canned food. Usually we add rice and um, puppy formula to make sure that everybody's getting their belly full several times a day. And so um, they're not just getting, they're not just nursing from their mother, but that's not as nutritious as mother's milk but it, it is a supplement. And so we try to get some weight on them and things like that. But right away, the puppies from my smaller litter are at a disadvantage as far as take home weight. That does not mean that in the long run <clears throat> that those puppies will be smaller. It just means that in the beginning, they start off smaller. So in the long run, they're not at a disadvantage, just means their take home weight is smaller. So that's number one. <laughs> So when you call me um, when they're four months old and say, how big should my puppy be? That's why I'm like, I don't know. 
<laughs> there's no set answer because it all depends on where they started at. And so by four months old, if you go to the dog park and you see another four month old puppy and they're smaller than yours or bigger than yours, it there's so much background information that could be lacking that really determines so much. And um, so that's why I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not because I don't know. It's because there's no right answer. <clears throat> okay. So once you get your puppy home, we're just kind of, kind of graze through kind of the whole um, growth stage and what should be happening and what could happen and things like that. So you get your puppy home at eight weeks. The very next thing that happens is they get a nine week distemper and parvo shot, right? Then they get a 12 week parvo and distemper shot and then they get their 16 uh, week rabies shot, right? That's, that's what happens next. So another thing that's super important about growth, and I'm going to preach this until the day I die, free feeding is so important because they are going to be growing and by limiting food, you know, you're only allowed to have a cup three times a day. Those puppies are growing and they know how much they need. Dogs will not overeat their dog food. So they know how many calories they need when they need it, when they're growing. So if you leave food in the bowl all the time, they'll know how much they need. And this is why, this is one reason why free feeding is so important. While they're growing, they need more. While they're not growing, they need less. But if there's always food in the bowl, they will not overeat, but they will eat more when they need it. So free feeding, super important, um, and even more so while they're a growing puppy. So super important, they will never overeat, they will never be food insecure, and they will never be food aggressive. So free feeding, super duper important. Okay, <clears throat> so we've gotten them to 16 weeks, they're four months old, those little puppies, they're growing up. Um, you'll start to see body changes. They should be getting a little bit taller. They should be getting thicker. And then six months hits. This is your first major growth spurt. Happens around six months old. Um, this can happen um, a month before or after, but it tends to be around six months old. And we're going to talk about something called pano. So what pano is, is where the bone grows faster than the muscles and tendons around the bones. So um, typically you'll see this happen in the front leg. It can happen in any leg, but you'll, you tend to see it happen in the front legs um, and it will present itself as a limp. And so you'll freak out. Don't freak out. <laughs> um, you'll take your dog to the vet. They'll usually do an x-ray. They can't see anything um, because what happens is that tendon and those um, ligaments, they tear. And that's why your dog limps is because those tendons and ligaments are sore. So what needs to happen is your dog needs to go on anti-inflammatories. It usually takes two to three weeks. So um, imagine if your bone grew super duper fast, those tendons and ligaments tear and rip. And so you'll put your dog on anti-inflammatories anti-inflammatories like I said two to three weeks it takes to heal you'll want your dog to kind of chill for a little bit it doesn't need to be super confined as far as like you don't need to put your dog in a kennel or anything crazy just no <clears throat> running or jumping around excessively uh, just so that those tendons and ligaments have time to heal I will tell you if panel happens once it tends to happen in every growth spurt at least that has been my experience so you tend to have at least two major growth spurts in the Bernese Mount Mountain Dog, if I can talk, um, sometimes three. It tends to happen at six, nine, and occasionally 12 months. And what happens is they'll grow up and then they'll grow out. Um, so when they grow up, that bone grows super fast and those tendons and ligaments will tear. And so if it happens at six months, it will happen again at nine and then maybe again at 12. The 12 month growth spurt tends to be a little bit less. So sometimes you'll see the panel flare back up and sometimes you won't. So, but if it happens to your dog the first time, it will tend to happen the second and or maybe third. So if panel happens to you, again, don't freak out. Um, just take your dog up, get the x-ray done to make sure that there's nothing um, with the bone. When nothing comes up with the bone, um, they'll tell you that it's panel. get those anti-inflammatories, um, no big deal. 
So let's just talk about the growth spurts. If you don't get panel, it, it panel really actually is not that common. It's common enough to bring it up, but not common enough in the breed um, that it's something to be concerned about as far as, you know, <clears throat> in my dogs, it's only ever happened once. I did freak out because I thought he did something to his leg. Um, and maybe in my puppies, it's happened five times to owners that have taken their puppies home. But once I knew what it was, it's something I talked to my puppy owners about. And yep, that's what it was. No big deal. Um, so with the growth spurts, your dogs tend to grow up, like I say, and they get real skinny. Um, I call it the no one feeds me phase because they get tall and lengthy. They kind of get skinny and then it takes them a little bit to fill back out. And then just in time for the next growth spurt, they grow up, they get real skinny. looks like no one feeds them and then they fill back out. <clears throat> so your dog, your Bernie Smountain dog will get as tall as they will be by 18 months old typically and then they will fill out and be fully mature by three and that's usually their fully mature size is by three years old and that is why they are called a slow maturing dog. Most dogs are fully mature by the age of 12 months. Bernese Mountain Dogs are three years old so it is not your typical dog in that regard. So while we are talking about fully mature sizes, I'm going to talk to you about something that really irritates me about vets. <laughs> no offense to vets, but um, I do get a uh, phone call quite often, probably five or six times a year that says, um, Heather, I went to my vet and my vet says that my dog is overweight and they'll send me some pictures or some videos of their dog and their dog is not overweight in any regard. So vets want a Bernese Mountain Dog to look like a lab where their tummy's kind of tucked in um, to their body a little bit. <clears throat> a Bernese Mountain Dog is not built like a lab or um, another sporting breed like that. They are a working breed um, and they are built, we breed our dogs here to be square. So when you look at our dogs, they are square. Their bodies are square. Their heads are square. We do not want your Bernese Mountain Dog's belly to be sucked up. <clears throat> when you look at your Bernese Mountain Dog, you want their body to be square. They are square and they are rigid. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are not built like other dogs. They are not designed to be built like other dogs. And so when you look at your dog and your vet says your dog's overweight, Odds are they're not. They just don't understand the design of your dog. So that's something. Um, so as we kind of go through the maturity of your dog, we're at like, I kind of went out of order, but we're at like that six, seven month mark now. Your dog will start shedding their puppy hair and you're getting into their teenage hair. So there's two types of teenage hair, depending on what type of lines you have. If you have the more American line, your dog's hair will start to kind of get wavy, maybe a little curly. If you go to our McCoy video, for example, McCoy has curly hair. He's a more American line. Um, if you have a more European line, they, um, they won't get such curly hair. They'll kind of maybe get a little bit of wave, um, but it will start to turn into that silky hair. So now they're getting their teenage, more adult hair. And um, this is where you are introduced to their shedding. <laughs> So welcome to the club. <laughs> this is where you will start to find hair everywhere. So you are fully being introduced to the Bernese Mountain Dog and there's no going back now. So uh, this is where that hair transition really begins is around that um, somewhere usually between five and seven months, they start to really lose their puppy fur and they start to get their more teenage and adult hair. So this is when that happens. And, um, this is when you start to really, um, kind of start to considering to maybe spay your females. So here at Burner Babies, we require that you spay by 12 months. Now there's a lot of controversy around this, <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you why Burner Babies requires you to spay by 12 months. There has been no true evidence that having a female come into heat is good for her body. 
There is, however, a huge risk of infection, deadly or emergency infection by her coming into heat. Um, I don't know how to say it. It's like pyometra or something like that. You can Google it. So what it happens is when she comes into heat and she'll lick herself, there is a risk of bacteria getting up into her uterus and causing a severe infection. So when this happens, it becomes life threatening. And if it is not, if it is not caught fast enough, it, be, it does become life threatening. And if it happens, you automatically, um, it automatically becomes an emergency space situation. So rather than putting her through that risk, we just recommend you spay before she even comes into heat because there is no proof that her coming into heat <clears throat> is beneficial for her. So on the flip side, there is great benefit for a male um, having that peak testosterone. There are many um, prostate benefits and bone density benefits for him experiencing the peak in testosterone, which comes between 12 and 18 months. So if we can get him to his peak testosterone, which comes between, like I said, 12 and 18 months, and then neutering him. So we do recommend that you neuter by 18 months. The caveat of that is he will, he could potentially start to mark around 12 months, lift his leg to urinate, things like that. So if you do not want him to do that, um, you could neuter him around 12 months when his testosterone does start to peak. So he gets a little bit of that peak um, and then you neuter him so that he does not start to mark and lift his legs to urinate, that type of thing. So it all depends on your personal preference for that, but there are benefits to allowing him to peak in testosterone before neutering. However, with the females, there are not um, any proven benefits to her experiencing that heat cycle. However, there are some down things, and I have had um, a handful of um, puppy families contact me regarding that Pymetra, I think it's called, I don't know how to say it, but that infection during heat who had ended up in emergency space, um, one of which the family had taken her to the bed a couple different times during her heat cycle and then called me, told me what's going on. And I said, this is exactly what's going on. You need to push your bet to spay her now or she is going to pass. And they went, took her back, pushed based on what I had said and they did end up in an emergency spay, thank God, because her uterus was on the verge of exploding. And that is a scary situation to be in when your bed is not listening. So, and too many times they kind of brush you aside and, and that's not right. So there's that. Um, so kind of going back to that seven to nine month range, um, when you should be starting to think about to spay your neuter, your dog, um, kind of start setting up those appointments for the time frames I just mentioned. This is also the time that I start to transition my puppies from puppy food to adult food. I do this around nine or 10 months once they've had that final growth spurt, um, around that nine month mark <clears throat> that I kind of, I feel like I'm bouncing all over, <laughs> but this is, this is kind of like the time frame. So once they've had that final growth spurt around that nine or 10 month mark, this is when I transition them to adult food. Um, so we use the Purina Pro Plan, whatever dog food you're on, switch them to something similar um, in the adult version. So we go from chicken puppy to chicken adult, and we just start blending that. Um, we start with 75% of our puppy food and 25 of our adult. Then we go to 50-50 and then 75% of the adult food to 25% of the puppy. And then eventually we're at 100% um, of the adult food. And it usually takes about a month. So by the time they're 11 months old, they're fully transitioned to the adult food. So right before a year old, they are fully on adult food. So um, I'm just kind of looking over my notes. Oh, adult weights. That's what I was going to discuss next and last. So, um, according to the AKC, a full grown adult female, Bernice mountain dog should weigh about 85 pounds. So 
I don't know if I agree with this exactly because I think I only have about two females that weigh 85 pounds. Everybody else really hovers closer to that 100 pound mark. Um, and some of them might even be over that. Um, and then the males they say should weigh 115. I don't have any males that weigh 115. My boys are probably closer to 125. And then I even have a couple that I know by the time they are three years old will be closer to 150 to 160 pounds. So I don't know if I agree with that. And I also think that if you were to watch the dog shows, you know, the, the AKC sponsored dog shows, when you get to like best in class, best in show regarding the Bernice mountain dogs, the ones that win are not that weight. <laughs> so, um, I, but I do think that there are dogs that weigh that who are perfectly within standard. So that's what I was kind of saying in the beginning. There's no true standard um, when it comes to Bernice Mountain Dogs because they can weigh as less or as little as 85 pounds and probably even less. You know, um, Bailey, for example, she only weighed 75 pounds and then Bear weighed like 150 for a female. I mean, she was a big, maybe she weighed like 130. It's, it's hard for me to remember. She's been gone for so long, but she was a girl and she, she weighed like a lot for a female. So, but then I've seen Bernice Mountain Dogs, Peyton, for example, weighed 178 pounds at her heaviest. And when I put her on a diet, she only dropped like 174. So, I mean, she was a big girl. I've heard of other Bernice Mountain Dogs that weighed 180, 190 pounds. So the, the range is so vast, so vast that, that I don't think it's fair to try to put your Bernice Mountain Dog in a box or to try to compare them to other <clears throat> Bernice Mountain Dogs. I think what's important is to ask yourself, are they healthy? Are they in good body condition? And that's the only thing that you should try to compare them to is themselves and those standards because if you if I were to try to compare little bit for example who is a great dog she's got great body condition to boss who is ginormous she would never live up to that standard no matter what I fed her how I tried to exercise her um, she would never live up to that standard and so it would never be fair to her however in her own right, she's a great Bernice Mountain Dog. She's got great body condition. She's very sweet. Her markings are nice. But she will never be boss. Who is an amazing Bernice Mountain Dog. <laughs> so I think everybody just needs to um, be judged on their own individual characteristics and their own standards. So... I think that's what it really comes down to. So I, I know this video probably did not live up to anybody's expectations. <laughs> and for that, I apologize. But unfortunately, when I, when you call and say, what should my Bernice Mountain Dog weigh at four months, six months, nine months? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> it's because I don't. And there really is not a good answer. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something <laughs> and um, make sure that you like and subscribe below and I hope that you continue to follow Burner Babies even though I definitely am no expert. All right. Well, thanks for listening everyone and uh, have a great day and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.